All right, uh, hey guys, this is Amber Fenson here with a bow tutorial of sorts. Um, so I'm just gonna be going over some of the stuff I know with bow um, and stuff that's new to Monster Hunter World, basics to the bow and how to use it. Um, so I've been using the bow since pretty much for you. I used it for for you, where <laughs> the Seregios bow was king, and I used it in Generations or Cross, where the I think it was Cross, where the Teostra bow was also king. Um, so I've seen some shit, but the bow has seen some really crazy changes this game that you might have seen. As of now, I believe the bow is the fifth most popular weapon, according to the Wivarian Wiver um, Elder. First Wivarian? Wivarian Elder? Something like that? Um, so yeah, the bow is really popular, and there's a lot of new stuff to it, so hopefully I'll be um, able to show you. Um, so as you see on the left, you have the basic controls of the bow. So let's whip out the bow. Shoot. Um, so L2, you can aim. Um, new to Monster Hunter World is that rather than you having to stand still and shoot, um, well, you can move while aiming, but you have once you're shooting, you have to um, stand still. You can actually move while shooting. This is a major difference because a lot of monsters in this game have very linear attack patterns. Um, and just by moving slightly while you're shooting, um, you can dodge a lot of things. This is applicable to the other guns as well. So you hold L2 to aim and you hold R2 to shoot. Um, hold R2 and just pay attention to these flashes to charge. So you have up to three levels normally. So one, two, three. And the more you charge, the more arrows you get. With level two charge, you get two arrows. Um, with level 3, you get 3 arrows. Now, you'll notice that new to bow is that you can actually chain your shots. I like to call this the chain gatling. Um, by shooting in succession, you actually auto level up your shots. Um, and you will do that like a longer release animation for the last shot. So this is a faster way of getting to level 3. Um, you can also level up your shots by doing this, which I call the charge slide. Um, or the charging sidestep, as the, call, um, the game calls it. So... Basically, the bow is very much a kind of like a combo ranged weapon now, so it, it ends up being a very good blade master uh, gun transition weapon. Um, but let's go over the other moves the bow can do before I start talking about how to effectively use charges. Um, and so after a shot, you can press circle and you will do a power shot, which um, is a shotgun fan of arrows. Um, and this will do more damage and will auto also auto level up. So if you fire from a one, you'll shoot a level two power shot. Um, whoops, I was not meant to do that move. But um, and if you fire from a level two, you'll do a level three power shot. If you fire from a level three, you'll do a level three power shot. Um, so that's good to keep in mind. If you hold um, while you're charging, if you press circle, you'll do the arc shot which shoots uh, a pack into the air that will start raining pellets. These pellets will do light damage, um, but the most important thing about these pellets is that they do exhaust damage, which will eventually make the monster tired. If you hit the head, it'll do KO damage, um, which will knock out the monster eventually. Um, so yeah, that's a cool move. Um, situational and not always useful, but it has its uses, especially if you have other people knocking the monster down, and you can add to the, you know, sort of chain crowd control that your friends are offering. Um, or if you have paralyzed coding on your, uh, on your bow, then you could pretty much chain CC the monster yourself. So the next move you can do is the Dragon Piercer. Um, this is a new move. Everyone fucking loves it. It is where the pierce shot of the old bow went. Um, and by pressing triangle and circle, as you can see on the left, you grind your arrow across the floor, and you shoot a piercing arrow. This will pierce through, hit things, um, has a very long range, and just does a lot of damage, but it's not always suited for every monster, because not every monster has good um, hit zones across their entire body. Um, other miscellaneous moves you have after... Well, let's go into the sidesteps. So while you're aiming, press any direction and X. Um, by default, it will go forward to charge sidestep, charging sidestep. When you're charging a sidestep, you will automatically level up um, your shot. So if I shoot one move and then shoot three, um, well, shoot again, I go from, I shoot, charge slide, and then level up, and that my next shot will automatically be a three. So one, charge slide, shot, three, three arrows. Let me actually hit that so you can see that. So one, charge slide, shot, three arrows. So yeah. 
Um, the charge slide is useful. It lets you reposition very aggressively and um, at the same time still get your shots off rather than having to give up on your shot like you would before when you had to roll in previous games. Um, from the charge slide, you can actually also do a power shot for pressing the circle. Um, that will also be leveled up uh, according to the rules of Chain Gatling and Charge Slide. And you can also do a Dragon Piercer. Um, Dragon Piercer also functions in level up, as you can see from the redness of the bow. Um, so yeah, that's basic movement. Um, other moves the bow has is after a charge slide, press triangle to do the lunging melee attack. Um, this will do mount damage if you hit the right hitboxes on a monster. Um, it does okay damage, actually. It's hard to aim, as you can see. Um, I'm ass at aiming it. But it does mean bow is one of the few weapons that can unconditionally mount a monster in any area. Um, sort of does okay damage. Um, alongside sword, sword and Shield, Lance, and um, obviously Insect Glaive. I might be missing another weapon. Um, so yeah, uh, then we can look at your jumping attacks by going over here. Your jumping attacks are very simple. You have um, trying. well, let me not climb on these. Well, triangle, um, which is the jumping melee attack. It has one hitbox when you swing and one hitbox when you land. Um, for a double hit, pretty okay. Um, and another thing you can do while jumping is shoot. Um, um, which lets you, you know, get to hit the ground running and fire a shot off. Your slide down the hill moves are the same. Um, you have... You can start charging. Or you can just jump and do a jumping melee attack. Um, as you can see here. So that's the moves of the bow. Oh, there's one more. This is the, I call it the Hanzo if you played Overwatch. You have to find these kind of like outcroppings, these walls that you could normally climb up of um, that automatically make you uh, jump off them like this. You sort of wall run and then you jump. By charge sliding into these things, you automatically run up um, run up them and shoot a scatter shot or a spread power shot, whatever you want to call it, um, perpendicular to the surface you've just run up to. And this is actually Bo's most powerful move in terms of damage per arrow. It does more damage than Dragon Piercer, if you notice that damage right there. Um, uh, that was a 23 on the... Actually, that's weird. Yeah, there we go. It, uh, um, it benefits from charging, and it did 57 there, where a dragon, a fully charged dragon piercer, sorry, that's not fully charged, but you'll, you'll get the idea, did 32. Um, yeah, so that's a situational but very fun move to use. Uh, look out for surfaces that you can do that on, and sometimes you can juke a monster and do some crazy damage to it at the same time. Um, so that's all the bow's moves. Um, yeah. Um, so next we can talk about coatings, which you can see on the um, bottom right and the right. Um, these are all very self-explanatory. Um, press triangle to load a coating, and press triangle to unload a coating, or if you already have a coating and you swap to a different coating, you'll automatically swap to that coating. Um, each coating does exactly what it mean, uh, what it says. Um, sleep coating will eventually put a monster to sleep as you hit things. Close range coating, let me load close range coating. Um, Increases your damage, um, but also gives your arrows a max distance, as you can see there, um, which is kind of like a very much shorter max distance, which is kind of like sad. Um, poison coatings will poison the monster if you hit them enough. Power coatings will increase your damage by 30% um, unconditionally, but you only have 50 of them, so try to make those count or don't. Um, it really doesn't matter these days because it's went, gone down from 50 to 30. And the one where the two we're missing on this bow um, are paralyzed coating, which will paralyze the monster, and uh, blast coating, which will build a blast on the monster and cause it to explode. Um, so the thing to know about coatings is that coatings will transfer to all moves except the arc shot. Um, so let me load well, my load poison coating and fire off um, arc shot. You'll notice that the arc shot does not cause any poison, but the normal arrows do. Uh, from the purple cloud there. Um, every other move will um, poison, or whatever coating you have up. As you can see from the Dragon Piercer, um, 
And while you have a status coding up, um, and so that anything besides power or close coding, you will remove the element from your bow. So keep that in mind. Um, you will do less damage while that's up. Uh, so that's coatings. Um, that's the moves of bow. Um, next, we can talk about um, just gen uh, I've talked about the chain. Um, Let's talk about armor skills. So, um, bows, armor skills, classically, there have been a lot of different armor skills um, that bow has liked and one that bow has thought to be necessary. I'm going to show you, um, let's show you the classic, uh, which is focus. Focus is a three point skill. At three points, it increases the charge rate of um, bow's charges by 20%. So. You see that's notably faster. Um, this used to be an important move because all you really did on bow was charge up shots and then power shot up afterwards. Um, and that kind of isn't a thing anymore because you can chain Gatling. Um, actually, this is the leggy on a set. So you'll notice I have another charge level. Um, I'll explain that in a second. Um, so one, two, three in comparison to one, two, three. Um, so in the same time, I outputted six arrows, really, um, and I tried to charge. I outputted um, three arrows by charge by just straight charging. So because of this new function, and because you can move while shooting, and you can sort of charge slide around and maintain your charge, you notice I'm not really spending a lot of time actually charging. Um, so focus is less important in this game, in my opinion, especially since you can sort of just wail on a monster's weak point constantly um, by using the chain gatling function. Um, so not as important. Um, this set also has evasion, which I think is very, I think is a very fun thing to have on bow um, because it lets gives your charge slides more iframes than they already have, which I think are more than normal rolls. And lets you like say a monster roars at you. Um, so we can have this barrel, and we can shoot it. And so you can, I mean, I don't think I actually dodged the hitbox there, but you understand what I'm going for, is that instead of just like rolling out of the way like you would before, um, you can charge slide to reposition and iframe do things and generally keep up the aggression. Whereas bow was very much like look for an opportunity, sort of very much like a ranged hammer or a great sword. Um, so it's not that case anymore. Um, so we can look at other skills. My next set is the uh, mixed ball hazak set. Um, and you'll see here it has recovery speed, focus, focus because I kind of still like it, peak performance, and evade extender. So peak performance is a skill that causes your damage to increase um, when you have max HP. As a gun, and as someone who will see the monster coming, and with um, charge slides, um, char peak performance is pretty easy to keep. Um, so that's a good way to increase your damage. Um, evade extender is very interesting because you will your charging slides will massively increase in distance. You can see how far I'm traveling here compared to how it was before, um, which lets you reposition even more aggressively um, and sort of just fucking traverse like an entire section of the area really fast and get out of the way of a lot of things. Um, so next um, is a more aggressive set that I've made. Um, this has three skills of note. Um, we have weakness exploit, uh, evade, well, we have, we've, we have weakness exploit, normal shots, agitator, and stamina surge. Um, so that's four, I think I counted that right. I'm, I'm good at math. Um, so stamina surge causes your stamina regen 30% faster, which is good. Um, lets you, because because of the way bow plays now, and because dash juices no longer give you infinite stamina, you'll notice my stamina bar on the top left is charging much faster. Um, lets me sort of be more much aggressive, much more aggressive with my shots. Agitator is an ability that causes you to gain damage um, and affinity when a monster is in uh, rage mode, which is a lot of the time. So it's kind of an unconditional damage boost for when it most matters. Um, Weakness exploit, when I hit a spot that has orange damage, um, which means I've hit a weak spot, I gain 30% uh, affinity at my current level of weakness exploit, which is 2. You'll notice every now and then I hit this um, 
I hit this post, it'll have a star underneath the number, and it'll be more damage. That means that was a critical, which was for, I think, 25% extra damage. Uh, something like that. Um, yeah, it looked like it was 25% damage. Um, with 25 into 29. So, um, yeah, these are the three.